Okay, let's get started. We have IELTS listening part one and uh, there is this test. Complete the notes below. Question type is notes completion and write one word and or a number. Very common question type, one word and or a number in part one. And in part four, one word only or one word and or a number. Buckworth, you know Buck, a lot of people do a lot of Buck Buck. I mean, this is the same Buckworth. Conservation group. Now, conservation. Remember this word, conservation. Whenever you protect plants or any species of animals, that is what we call conservation group. You may call it conservation, but they pronounce S as S sound. Conservation group. Now, they have their regular activities. And the first point is beach. Okay, yeah, he's smiling. When I said the word beach, <laughs> You are going to clean the beach, okay? You're not going to shower or swim there. All right. Making sure. Now, imagine conservation group. Now, for example, if a conservation group will go to the park, they will clean the park. If they go to the beach, they are going to clean the beach, okay? Making sure the beach does not have. Underline the word does not have. All right, it's IELTS listing part one. Complete the notes below. Write one word and or a number and it's Buckworth Conservation Group and their regular activities. First activity is beach, making sure the beach does not have. Now, what will they do? They are going to paraphrase does not have. For does not have, they can use the word without. For does not have, they can use the word make free. Right. For example, answer is uh, garbage. For example, answer is garbage. So making sure beach does not have garbage. So make sure beach is without garbage or there is no garbage on the beach. No, does not have without make beach free from the garbage. Now, be make beach free from the garbage also means does not have garbage. So in IELTS listening, all four parts, they actually use rewording, paraphrasing. Okay, for example, uh, I can use the word bottle. Now, bottle is proper English word. Now, if, I, if I'm going to paraphrase it for bottle, I can use the word container. This is called uh, synonyms. The third technique is paraphrasing. For that, they can say a container which is used to hold liquids inside. A container which is used to hold liquids inside, all right? Or a device which is used to write pen. Okay, so this is what we call rewording, paraphrasing, or they can use the synonyms. Now, please listen and answer question number one. You will hear a woman called Jan phoning a man about their local conservation group. Hello? Oh, hello. My name's Jan. Are you the right person to talk to about the Buckworth Conservation Group? Yes, I'm Peter. I'm the secretary. Good. I've just moved to this area and I'm interested in getting involved. I was in a similar group where I used to live. Could you tell me something about your activities, please? Of course. Well, we have a mixture of regular activities and special events. One of the regular ones is trying to keep the beach free of litter. A few of us spend a couple of hours a month on it. And it's awful how much there is... Okay, one of the regular one is trying to make the beach free from litter. How do you spell this litter? L-I-T-T-E-R. -T -T -E and litter means garbage. Excellent. That's right. So correct answer is litter. Don't, don't write letter. It's litter. Next, no dash. No dash. Okay, so uh, once we went to Jina Garden and they had written, Park me janwar lana mana hai. Now, janwar is animal. Like pets are not allowed in the park. Yasin was around. We were recording something. He removed R from there, Ray from there. And then it became Park me. Janu lana mana hai. Janwar ka re uda diya. And the rest of that was park mein janu lana mana hai. So janu and janwar only ek re ka fark hota hai. Kabhi kabar janu janwar ban jata hai. Kabhi kabar janwar se janu bana hota hai. Okay. Anyways, let's go on. So no dash. Now synonym of no. 
Or, for example, no smoking. No smoking, for that they can say you are not allowed to smoke here. Smoking is prohibited, right? So something like that. I'd be happy to help with that. Is it okay to take dogs? I'm afraid not, as they're banned from the beach itself. You can take them along the cliffs, though, and children are welcome. Right. Is it okay to take dogs? I'm afraid not. What does it mean? Dogs are not allowed. Is it okay to smoke here? I'm afraid not. So no smoking. Answer is dogs. That's right. Singular or plural. But in the audio, they said plural. And when you're going to appear in actual exam, they will give you headphones. In computer delivered, headphones are very clear. In, in paper delivered also, they have infrared headphones. So you can easily manage that, right? Okay, next we have nature reserve. And this nature reserve is having two points without question. Whenever there is a point without question, you need to underline one word there. Why? So that you track the audio. It's very important that you and audio go on side by side. So in the first point, underline the word path. In the second point, underline the word boxes. In the third point, there is a question. And you will not read these two points. Don't waste your time by reading everything. Okay? Next. Next task is taking action to attract dash to the place. Underline the word to attract. To attract dash to the place. For example, answer is to attract birds to the place. For example, in, in your house, if you have some water and some seeds for the birds and you have a nest box in your house somewhere, the birds will automatically come. What does it mean? You are attracting the birds. So to attract birds. Now what are the other words other words for birth? To attract. For example, to motivate the birds to come. To encourage the birds to come, encourage, motivate, attract, these are synonyms. Now, answer will come after the synonym of attract. Now, please listen and answer. We also manage a nature reserve, and there's a lot to do there all year round. For example, because it's a popular place to visit, we spend a lot of time looking after the paths and making sure they're in good condition for walking. I could certainly help with that. Good. And we have a program of creating new habitats there. We've just finished making and installing nesting boxes for birds to use. And next, we're going to work on encouraging insects. They're important for the biodiversity of the reserve. They certainly are. Next, we are going to encourage insects. So correct answer is insects. Focus this last one. We part. also manage a nature boxes for birds to use. And next, we're going to work on encouraging insects. Next, we are going to work on encouraging insects. Okay. Now, let's go on. Identifying types of. I have seen this word in IELTS listening and reading many times. Underline the word types of. For types of, they can use the word types of, kinds of, species of. Sort of, S-O-R-T, sort. Type of, kind of, species of, and we are talking about animals, plants, and all that. So it can be types of, kinds of, species of, sorts of, anything like that. Okay, And you will find it in reading module as well. Now, let's see what comes after that, and that will be our answer. Oh, and we're also running a project to identify the different species of butterflies that visit the reserve. You might be interested in taking part in that. Sure. I was involved in something similar where... Okay. Different species of butterflies. How many words? Butterflies. One word. How do you spell flies? F-L-I-E-S. So if you spell butterflies with F-L-Y-S, your answer will be wrong. In that case, if you write only butterfly... Uh, types of, but they, they may accept it. If you're confused whether it is butterflies with F-L-Y-S or F-L-I-E-S, then you may write singular, they will accept it, okay? But correct answer is butterflies. Next, building a new. Now, underline the word new, and they're going to play with this word. All right, if I say I am buying a new mobile, for that, I can say I'm replacing my mobile. 
I'm replacing my mobile means I'm buying new mobile, right? Same you say I'm replacing my bike, I'm replacing my car, or I'm buying another mobile, another, that is also for new, okay? Or I'm updating my mobile, updating, another, replacing, so all these words are used for new. Now whatever they say after this, building a new, building means construction, building, making, creating a new something. Let's see what that is. So remember, reading the question is more important. If you read and understand the question and you know what to anticipate in the audio, you will find the answer. And if you read and you don't know what is going to be the answer, answer will come and go and you'll be like, he'll not write anything, okay? All right, let's see, question number five. Another job we're doing at the reserve is replacing the wall on the southern side between the parking area and our woodshed. It was badly damaged in a storm last month. Okay. Replacing a wall. It was badly damaged in a storm. So correct answer is wall. And people commonly say wall, college. Okay, so it's actually wall. Another job we're doing at the reserve is replacing the wall on the southern side. Replacing the wall on the southern side. Wall. Okay, now if you say wall and they say wall, you'll not understand. Once I asked my student, can I have some water, please? He was, what? Then I said, can I have some water, please? He was just like that. I said, I said can I have some water? He said, sure, sir, water available. Okay, so water and water, you need to understand. And as you practice, you will be clear. I mean, you need to see how do they talk, right? Okay, so correct answer is wall. Next, forthcoming events. Let's see what are the forthcoming events. Saturday, don't say Saturday. Char, char is wrong. T sound. Saturday, Saturday. Saturday, meet at Dunsmore Beach. Underline the word car park. There is no question. Just underline the word car park. When they talk about car park, it means they are there. Walk across the sand and reach the dash. Now, reach means destination. You will walk across the sand and you will reach a destination. So wherever you reach, that will be your answer. If they say, we will walk to the beach, what is the answer? Beach, right? We will walk across the sand to go to the beach. So what is the destination? Beach is the destination, that will be the answer. Now please listen and answer question number six. Then, as I said, we have a program of events as well, both at the weekend and during the week. Right. I presume you have guided walks. I'd like to get to know the local countryside as I'm new to the area. Yes, we do. The next walk is to Ruston Island a week on Saturday. We'll be meeting in the car park at Dunsmore Beach at low tide. That's when the sands are dry enough for us to walk to the island without getting wet. Sounds good. The island's a great place to explore. Okay, to walk to the island. How do you spell island? I-S-L-A-N-D and S is silent. Okay, one is Iceland. Do you know what is Iceland? It's a country. Iceland is a country. Okay, one is island and one is Ireland. Ireland is also a country. Okay, let's go on. Picnic, you will underline the word picnic. Wear appropriate. Now, whenever they use the word appropriate, they can replace it. For example, Wear appropriate. For example, answer is jacket. Wear appropriate jacket. Over here, they have written the word appropriate. In the audio, they will say wear warm jacket. Wear waterproof jacket. Waterproof means appropriate. Well done. Okay, so this is the synonym of that. Now, let's see you're going to wear. You understand it is some wearable. So what wearable is that? And appropriate. It's also an ideal location for seeing seals just off the coast or even on the beach. Okay, and is there anything we should bring? Like a picnic, for instance? Yes, do bring one, as it's a full day walk. And of course, it'll be wet walking across and back, so make sure your boots are waterproof. I must buy a new pair. There's a hole in one of my current ones. Oh, good evening. There is a hole in my current ones. Booty which are tutte hoye I must buy a new one. So make sure you wear waterproof 
boots. Now, what is the word for appropriate? Waterproof. Waterproof. You need to understand that. And again, I'm telling you, after solving 8 to 10 listening tests with me, you will be aware of each and everything. Then nothing will be new for you, right? As I mentioned before, when book 19 came and I solved all the tests and I was smiling and laughing, same old techniques. Examiners don't have many techniques to make the test. So once you understand, the table is gone. Okay, please check that. Don't worry, it's gonna be all right. Okay, next we go on woodwork session. Now they have a woodwork set. And how do you spell boots? B O U B O O T S. Well done. All right, woodwork session suitable for dash to participate. Very simple question. Suitable for dash to participate means level. Is it for beginners? Is it for advanced level students? Right? So suitable for dash to participate. Okay? Let's see. Well, I'd definitely like to come on the walk. Great. Then later this month, we're having a one-day woodwork session in Hopton Wood. I've never tried that before. Is it okay for beginners to take part? Definitely. There'll be a couple of experts leading the session, and we keep the number of participants down, so you'll get as much help as you need. Excellent. So, is it okay for the beginners to take part? Definitely. And then he said there will be some experts who will conduct the session. Now, answer is not experts. Answer is beginners. And how do you spell beginners? B-E-G-I double N. If you write beginner with single N, your answer will be wrong. So spelling matters, right? Beginners and answer is that. Next, making dash out of wood. Whenever they write the word out of wood, out of plastic, out of iron, very simple. They are just going to use that word. For example, if they are going to make chair out of wood, answer is going to be in the audio, they will say wooden chair. If they're going to make chair out of plastic, in the audio, they will say plastic chair, I mean plastic chair. If they say uh, jewelry out of gold, in the audio, they will say gold jewelry. This is very common technique that they have. Whenever they use the word out of and then material, they use material with that product with, which is made with that. Okay, so let's see. I'd love to be able to make chairs. <laughs> That's probably too ambitious for one day. You'll be starting with wooden spoons. And of course, learning how to use the tools. And anything you make is yours to take home with you. That sounds like fun. Answer is, no, cheers. Good. She said, I would love to make cheers. And he said, huh. That's too ambitious for one day at D2C Ani, something like that he said. Okay, but you would be starting off with spoons. So correct, wooden spoons. So correct answer is spoon, S-P-O-O-N-S. All these spelling are confusing. Like butterflies with plural, then we have island, that is confusing, boots, beginners, and all that. Okay, after that, the next point, underline the word 3 p.m. When they speak about 3 p.m., you know audio is there. And next, cost of session, no camping. Now, what will happen? They will tell you two costs. One is with camping and one is without camping. So, without camping will be your answer. When is it? It's on the 17th from 10 a.m. until 3. There's a charge of £35, including lunch, or £40, if you want to camp in the wood. I should think I'll come home the same day. Well, it's... So, 40. Well done. Who's written 40? Well done. Good. Wrong answer. 35 is the right answer. Okay? So, 35 with lunch and all that. And if you want camping, then it is 40. How will you write 35? 35. That's it. Simple. Okay? Yeah. All right, let's go on. We have IELTS listening part two. And in IELTS listening part two, there is an audio commentary where one person will talk. Uh, you have to listen and answer the questions. The common questions that we have in listening part two, they are multiple choice, single or double. After that, matching. And then we have maps. So sometimes there are maps, otherwise multiple choice questions. 
Boat trip round Tasmania. Now, Tasmania is the name of a place. <coughs> and you just need to imagine a boat trip. You may have seen the boat and you go somewhere on a boat and all that. Now, uh, if you imagine, you can understand things better. And if you don't imagine, it's going to be hard for you to understand. In listening and in reading, your visualization, your imagination will help you a lot. If I say, imagine a beautiful white boat. Can you? Agar dekhi hogi to imagine karenge na? Okay, so you need to see things as well. Question number 11. What is the maximum number of people who can stand on each side of the boat? This is the boat, right? Maximum number of people who can stand on each side of the boat. Now imagine if two people stand here and 12 people stand there. Yeah, the boat will capsize. We use the word capsize, right? So there should be a certain number of people who will stand on both sides of the boat. Why will they stand to look around? Okay, so that, that's what the question is. Option A, 9. Option B, 15. Option C, 18. And answer is going to be A, B, C. I have noticed one thing. When the words are short, what do the students do? Answer, they write 9. Or they write 12 or 15 or whatever. But whenever they label anything, answer is going to be that label. A, B or C. Now what's the question? Number of people who can stand on one side of the boat. And he will talk about all numbers. You need to see what is the right answer. You will hear a tour guide, Lou Miller, speaking to a group of people about a boat trip they are going to take around the Australian island of Tasmania. So, hello everyone. My name's Lou Miller and I'm going to be your tour guide today as we take this fantastic boat trip around the Tasmanian coast. Before we set off, I just want to tell you a few things about our journey. Our boats aren't huge, as you can see. We already have three staff members on board. And on top of that, we can transport a further 15 people, that's you, around the coastline. But please note, if there are more than nine people on either side of the boat, we'll move some of you over. <laughs> Otherwise, all 18 of us will end up in the sea. Okay. So answer is? Answer is not nine. Answer is A. Okay. He said if there are more than nine people, all of us will end up in the C. So we'll move some of you over. He said clearly like 15 of you and three crew members and all that. So correct answer is option A. And whenever you, you we call them labels, A, B, C, that, that is labeling. Whenever you write your answer as label, always use capital letter. Capital A will be the right answer. Okay, question number 12, what color are the tour boats? Now when they say what color are the tour boats, this is the exterior color. This is not the interior color, right? What color are the tour boats? What will happen? They may tell you our boats used to be. Used to be means what? Hua karti thi. Past tense. That will not be the answer. And if they say we are planning to paint some of our boats jet black. We are planning to paint future. That will not be your answer. Because question is what color are? Are means present tense. Exactly. So answer is what the color of boat is at present. Dark red, jet black, light green. And again, I'm telling you, he will talk about all three colors one by one, right? Now, please listen and answer. We've recently upgraded all our boats. They used to be jet black, but our new ones now have these comfortable dark red seats and a light green exterior in order to stand out from others and help promote our company. This gives our boats a rather unique appearance, don't you think? Okay. C, no, come on. A, well done. Who said A? Good job. Wrong answer. Dark red is the color of seats. So how can the color of seats be the color of boat? Huh? Okay. Seats will be in there. So correct answer is option C. Now please listen again. We've recently upgraded all our boats. They used to be jet black. They used to be jet black. Jet black is gone. Okay, now we are left with two options. This is called elimination. 
you need to listen carefully and the option which is wrong you have to eliminate that so jet black is gone but our new ones now have these comfortable dark red seats our new ones have these comfortable dark red seats now dark red is the color of seats that is also gone now what is left C is left, that will be your answer. So this is called elimination technique. When you eliminate wrong answer, obviously you will be left with the right one. And a light green exterior. And a light green exterior. So correct answer is option C. Next question is very good one. Which lunchbox is suitable for someone who doesn't eat meat or fish? Now there are three lunchboxes right so there is one lunch box that does not contain any meat or any fish right for example they will talk about lunch box one and you have to listen if it contains any meat fish it will not be your answer lunch box two lunch box three so where there is meat for meat they can use the word chicken mutton beef barla you know barla ham Okay, so that is what we call ham, okay. So it can be ham, it can be fish. Now they will not use the word fish, they may use the word kala rahu, okay, not in English. They may use the word tuna, sardines, uh, trout, any, any type of fish. So one lunchbox that contains fish or chicken or any type of meat will not be your answer, okay. Let's see. We offer you a free lunchbox during the trip, and we have three types. Lunchbox one contains ham and tomato sandwiches. Lunchbox two contains a cheddar cheese roll. And lunchbox three is salad-based and also contains eggs and tuna. All three lunchboxes also have a packet of crisps and chocolate bar inside. Please let staff know which lunchbox you prefer. All right. He said lunchbox three is salad based. And he said, yeah. Okay. Then he added the word tuna. And what is tuna? Fish. Tuna is fish. Okay. So the cheats, you like this. And one more thing. It's not that you say salad based, salad based, and then you close your ears. I found the answer. Listen till the end. In salad based, they added tuna and tuna is fish. So correct answer is B. Well done. Very good. I play this again. We offer you a free lunchbox during the trip and we have three types. Lunchbox one contains ham and tomatoes. Ham and tomato. Ham, like barla. Yeah. Now let's see option B. Sandwiches. Lunchbox two contains a cheddar cheese roll. Lunchbox 2 contains a cheddar cheese roll. That's it. Now, cheddar cheese is not meat or fish or anything like that. So, that is the right answer. And Lunchbox 3 is salad-based and also contains eggs and tuna. Salad-based and also contains eggs and tuna. Tuna is fish. So, correct answer is D. Question number 14, what should people do with their litter? Now, when you are having the lunch box, what should they do with their litter? Right? Throw in the sea. No, not like this, okay? Or throw in the street or anything like that. So what should people do with their litter? Take it home. Like they have the plastic bags, so put it in your backpack and take it home. Option A, hand it to member of staff. Say hello, take it. Okay, so member of staff, maybe they can be a waiter or they can be any staff member and they give it to them. And option C, put it in the bins provided on the boat. On the boat, there are dustbins and you can put them there. Now, what will happen? Two options will be discussed negatively, right? For example, option A, if they say, well, we don't have any bins on our boat, so it's better to take your trash with you and when you reach home you can dispose it off which will be the answer a right hand it to a member of staff they'll say after you finish your lunch our staff members will collect the garbage from you then it is option b and option c put it in the bins provided on the boat they'll say as you see there are red bins on the boat so you can just 
uh, put your garbage in those bins. Then it's going to be option C. Now let's see what happens. I'm sure I don't have to ask you not to throw anything into the sea. We don't have any bins to put litter in, but Jess, myself, or Ray, our other guide, will collect it from you after lunch and put it all in a large plastic sack. He said we don't have bins. Jess, Ray, or I will collect it from you and put it in a large plastic sack. So answer is B. Well done. That's good. Hand it to a member of staff and for member of staff, Jess, Ray and all that. Now, we've got double multiple choice questions. Questions 15 and 16. Which two features of Lighthouse does Lou mention? Now, two features, underline the word, two features, Lighthouse. So, there are five features in total. Three features will be wrong or false according to the audio. But two features will be correct according to the audio and those two features will be the right answer. Why it was built? Why means reasons. If they say it was built to protect the ships, if they say that, A will be the right answer. And they'll say, even today, nobody knows the real purpose of building this lighthouse. Will it be the answer? No. Option B, who built it? If in the audio they say it was built by King Alexander or anyone like that, B will be the right answer. And if they don't even talk about it, the person who built it, then B will not be the right answer. Option C, how long it took to build? If they say to build, if they say it, com it was completed in 20 years or it took 10 years to complete this lighthouse. So that is how long it took. But if they say... Uh, this lighthouse was made in 1920. Now, 1920 does not mean how long, right? If they say the construction started in 1920 and it finished in 1924, then it will be the right answer. Next, who staffed it? Very simple. In the lighthouse, the people who work there. If they say most of the people who work in the lighthouse, they are retired army soldiers. This will be the right answer. And if they don't tell us uh, who are these people, then it will not be the right answer. Option E, what it was built with. What, what does it mean? Material. If they say it was built with uh, rocks or it was built with wood or any other material, then it will be the right answer. Now, these five options will be discussed in any order. First, you need to pick up that option and then decide whether it is right or wrong. Okay, let's see. The engine on the boat makes quite a lot of noise, so before we head off, let me tell you a few things about what you're going to see. This area is famous for its ancient lighthouse, which you'll see from the boat as we turn past the first little island. It was built in 1838 to protect sailors, as a number of shipwrecks had led to significant loss of life. The construction itself was complicated, as some of the original drawings kept by the local council show. It sits right on top of the cliffs in a very isolated spot. In the 19th century, there were many jobs there, such as polishing the brass lamps, chopping firewood and cleaning windows that kept lighthouse keepers busy. These workers were mainly prison convicts until the middle of that century when ordinary families willing to live in such circumstances took over. All right, correct answer is A and D, no. B and D, no, come on, speak. All right, correct answer is A for apple, D for duck. These are correct answers. Now I tell you why other options are wrong. Okay, we listen to it once again. The engine on the boat makes quite a lot of noise. So before we head off, let me tell you a few things about what you're going to see. This area is famous for its ancient lighthouse, which you'll see from the boat as we turn past the first little island. It was built in 1838 it was built in 1838. How long? They didn't mention. To protect sailors. To protect sailors. What is that? Why it was built. It was built to protect 
sailors. So correct answer is option A. As a number of shipwrecks had led to significant loss of life. The construction itself was complicated. The construction itself was complicated, but they didn't mention what it was built with. They only said construction was complicated. As some of the original drawings kept by the local council show, it sits right on top of the cliffs in a very isolated spot. In the 19th century, there were many jobs there, such as polishing the brass lamps, chopping firewood, and cleaning windows that kept lighthouse keepers busy. Okay, there were many jobs. Now he's going to tell us who are these people. Right, G jobs were cleaning the window, chopping the wood, cleaning the brass lamps, and all that. These workers were mainly prison convicts, and these workers were mainly prison convict. Now, what's a prison convict? Someone who's got ten years prison, and then they take him to the life house, lighthouse. They say, "Udhar bhi to time guzar hai. Come over here and clean and all that." Okay, so prison convicts. Prison convict is someone who's been sentenced. Five years in prison, ten years in prison, and then these workers work actually. Like in Pakistan, uh, in Gilgit Baltistan, I saw some people from another country. They were working there, and uh, then I investigated and I came to know that those workers were actually prison convict. So they take them and they pay them. They pay them that money, and that money goes back to their family. So they are working here and all that. So the people who work, who staffed it? So who were the staff? Prison convicts. You need to know this word. Prison convict. All right. So A and D, and you can write if you're taking paper delivered IELTS. You can write your answer in any order. Fifteen A, sixteen D, or sixteen A, fifteen D. Now we've got questions seventeen and eighteen. Choose two letters. Which two types of creature? Underline two types of creature. Creature means animals. Which two types of creature might come close to the boat? Now, out of five, two creatures will come close to the boat, and three creatures you will see at the distance. Okay, now let's see which creatures will come close to the boat. Option A: Sea eagles. And don't trust your own IQ. Sea eagles. They will never come close. Right? They'll be flying above and all that. Okay. Sea eagles. Option B: Fur seals. Have you seen seals? Very big animal, right? Okay. Option C: Dolphins. Option D: Whales. And option E: Penguins. Now he will talk about all the animals, but he will say this animal will pop up right in front of you. It will come close, or he'll say you, even you can touch it, or you can feed them. When you can feed them, it means it they will come close. So the animals which will come close will be the right answer. Now let's see. Some of you have asked me what creatures we can expect to see. I know everyone loves the penguins, but they're very shy and unfortunately tend to hide from passing boats. But you might see birds in the distance, such as sea eagles, flying around the cliff edges where they nest. When we get to the rocky area inhabited by fur seals, we'll stop and watch them swimming around the coast. They're inquisitive creatures, so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you. Their predators, orca whales, hunt along the coastline too. But spotting one of these is rare. Dolphins, on the other hand, can sometimes approach on their own or in groups as they ride the waves beside us. Dolphins can approach. Approach means come closer. So correct answer is B and C. Now, for some of you, I'm going to repeat, and I tell you why A, D, E are wrong. Some of you have asked me what creatures we can expect to see. I know everyone loves the penguins, but they're very shy. Everyone loves the penguins, but they are very shy. Shy, you know? Yeah, Sharmili. Okay, it's penguin. Why are you laughing, huh? And unfortunately, tend to hide from. Unfortunately, tend to hide. Penguins hide themselves. Passing boats, but you might see birds in the distance. You might see birds. 
in the distance in the distance means far from you so sea eagle is a bird that answer is also gone such as sea eagles flying around the cliff edges where they nest when we get to the rocky area inhabited by fur seals we'll stop and okay fur seals watch them swimming around the coast they're inquisitive creatures so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you right the first seal comes and says cha okay, so don't be surprised about it okay or you're scared right all right that's good after this we go on after b option d for doctor their predators orca whales their predators orca whales and i mean you can't even imagine a whale will come closer to the boat then nothing will be left you know whales are such big creature they cannot come closer hunt along the coastline too but spotting one of these is rare dolphins on the other hand can sometimes approach on their own or in groups okay dolphins can approach approach means come closer right now let's go on question number 19 and 20 and this time options are long so we are going to learn how to cut these options short which two points does lu in short form in formal english lu is also called washroom that's right they also use the word lu but his name is washroom anyways okay we use the word lu common word informal word where is the lu i need to go to the lu lu is washroom yeah yes i know but pronunciation is same right okay which two points does lu make about the caves now subject is caves so two points he's going to make about the caves five points are given three points will be wrong they will be false according to the audio option a underline large tourist boats what does it mean only large tourist boats can go to the caves and in the audio if he says you can go there by small or large boats a will be gone uh, have you heard the word kayak can no these are small boats kayak kayak is uh, just this sized boat for one person one person is sitting and he's having the oars in his hand that is called kayak and we use the word cano cano is also a small boat okay so if they say you can go there by kayak it is the opposite of large tourist boat so answer, this will not be the answer entrances often blocked entrance of what caves our subject is caves okay entrances often blocked now in the audio if they say the entrances to the caves are often blocked by snow or something like that so b will be the right answer too dangerous for individuals right too dangerous for individuals what is the opposite of that for that you can say you can go there alone if in the audio he says you can go there alone then it will not be the answer right and if he says you must go there in a group as sometimes these caves can be very dangerous then it will be the right answer option d someone will explain what is inside there very simple our tourist guide will tell you what lies in the caves and by the way uh, if they don't use the word caves they'll say what lies beyond or when we go to the caves our tourist guide will tell you what lies beyond beyond means inside the caves option e cannot be reached on foot very simple they will not use the word foot okay for example if i say they cannot be reached on foot i say you can only go there by boat you can only go there by boat what does it mean cannot be reached on foot so this is how ielts examiners work actually they will not use the word foot they will use the word you can only go there by boat okay now i play the audio please listen carefully and two op and again don't focus full option only focus the words which we have underlined lastly i want to mention the caves tasmania is famous for its caves and the ones will pass by are so amazing that people are lost for words when they see them they can only be approached by sea but if you feel that you want to see more than we're able to show you then you can take a kayak into the area on another day 
and one of our staff will give you more information on that. What we'll do is to go through a narrow channel past some incredible rock formations, and from there we'll be able to see the openings to the caves, and at that point we'll talk to you about what lies beyond. So, we will talk to you about what lies beyond opening to the caves and all that. So, correct answers are B and D and E. Well done. Correct answers are D for duck, E for elephant. Okay. I'm playing it again. Those who are confused and out of two, if one answer is right, you will get one mark for that. Okay. Let's see. Lastly, I want to mention the caves. Tasmania is famous for its caves, and the ones we'll pass by are so amazing that people are lost for words when they see them. They can only be approached by sea. They can only be approached by sea. Option E. They cannot be reached on foot. So that is first correct answer. Now please come to option A. But if you feel that you want to see more than we're able to show you, then you can take a kayak into the area. You can take a kayak into the area. Option A, only large tourist boats can visit. He says you can take kayak into the area. Kayak is a small boat. So option A is wrong. Now, after A, please come to option B. Entrances are often blocked. On another day, and one of our staff will give you more information on that. What we'll do is to go through a narrow channel past some incredible rock formations, and from there we'll be able to see the openings to the caves. From there we will be able to see openings to the caves. Openings means entrances. Now, did he say that entrances are often blocked? He said we would be able to see openings to the caves. So B is also the wrong answer. And at that point, we'll talk to you about what lies beyond. At that point, we will talk to you about what lies beyond. Which option is that? D. Someone will explain what is inside them. What do they mean by them? Caves. Okay? Someone will talk to you what lies beyond. Lies beyond means inside them. Okay? Okay, guys, now we are going to start with IELTS listening part 3. And IELTS listening part 3 is always educational. There will be an academic discussion. Maybe two students discussing their work or uh, one professor and one student discussing something educational like a presentation, proposal or anything like that. Or sometimes there are two students with a tutor. So there can be a tutor and two students, they'll be talking together. But you will see two students and one tutor in old books, like Cambridge IELTS books 1 to 9 or 1 to 10. You will see in part 3 somewhere there are three speakers. But books 11 onwards, you will only find two people talking and discussion, uh, doing some discussion. One can be tutor and student or two students or initially tutor will come and say, okay, Tom and Jerry, I want you to discuss about your presentation and discuss the following key points. Over to you. Now tutor is gone. Now Tom and Jerry, they are left. Okay, sometimes Pink Panther also. Anyways, now the title is Work Experience for Veterinary Science Students. What is veterinary? Animal. That's what we call Dunga Doctor. Okay, so work experience. Work experience is more like house job. Once you complete your degree, it's more like MBBS. Okay, these people are very learned people. You know, uh, people can talk and say, Dr. Saab, I have a headache and all that, but animals cannot talk. Right? Yeah, once I went to deliver a lecture in uh, this veterinary science college in Lahore, and there I visited, there were different animals. They had a ward. In the ward, I found, uh, don't laugh, okay? In the ward, I found a donkey, there was a buffalo, there were some cows. And I said, who are they? They said, they are patients. So for me, it was strange, like, all right, but then they treat them and all that. And in foreign countries, animal doctors, like vets, they earn more than human doctors. Because people there, they love their cats more than they love their moms and dads. 
okay so anyways work experience for veterinary science students now imagine veterinary science student and they're going to do some house job now veterinary science students will do their house job either in a hospital or in a farmhouse where there are some cattle and sheep and cows and buffaloes and all that question number 21 what problem did both diana now this is diana okay not dana uh, what problem did both Diana and Tim, Diana and Tim have when arranging their work experience? Now, underline problem, both arranging work experience. Now, when they wanted to arrange their house job, okay? So, what was the problem? And by the way, answer is going to be a shared problem. You know, they mentioned what problem did both. Underline the word both as well. So their shared problem will be the answer. Option A, making initial contact with suitable farms. So making contact, like I'm a doctor, I've completed my graduation, I want to do some work at your farmhouse and all that. So if making initial contact, for example, Tim says, it was very difficult for me to make initial contact with the farmhouse. And Diana says, I had no problem. My father owns his own farmhouse. Will A be the answer? No. Option B, organizing transport. Now, Diana says, my farmhouse was 30 kilometers away from my house and it was very difficult for me to reach there every morning. And Tim says, I didn't have issues with that. I had my own scooter. For example, for example. So, this is not the answer, right? Answer is, then both of them will have the same problem. Option C, finding a placement. Now, what is placement? That you are allowed to work here. Finding a placement for the required <coughs> length of time. For example, three months. Like Diana wanted to work on a farmhouse for three months. And the farmhouse uh, owner said, we can only accommodate you for one month or something like that, there are more people. So if they had issues with the required length of time, it will be the answer. Now you will see where they say, me too, yes, you're right. And when they say, I was lucky, I didn't have this problem, that will not be the answer, okay? Now you understand the question that there are three options. Uh, two problems will be individual problems. That is not our answer. Our answer is their shared problem, right? You will hear two veterinary science students called Diana and Tim discussing their work placements and their course modules. So, Tim, we have to do a short summary of our work experience on a farm. Right. My farm was great, but arranging the work experience was hard. One problem was it was miles away and I don't drive. And also, I'd really wanted a placement for a month. But I could only get one for two weeks. Mm, I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm, so I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort of farm to apply to wasn't easy. No, they don't seem to have websites, do they? I found mine through a friend of my mother's, but it wasn't easy. No. Right answer is? Not A, come on, I told you, it's not A. C. Well done. C is the wrong answer, huh? Correct answer is A. Okay, now let's see why A is the right answer and why C is the wrong answer. It's very important. Whenever you find a wrong answer, you need to investigate why I selected C. Okay, so let's start. You will hear two veterinary science students called Diana and Tim discussing their work placements and their course modules. So, Tim, we have to do a short summary of our work experience on a farm. Right. My farm was great, but arranging the work experience was hard. One problem was it was miles away and I don't drive. Okay, one problem was it was miles away and I don't drive. And also, I'd really wanted a placement for a month, but I could only get one for two weeks. And also, I wanted a placement for a month, but I could get it for two weeks. Which option is that? C. Now, let's see what does she comment. Because her comment will decide the answer. Uh, problems B and C, these were the problems of Tim, not Diana, right? Mm, I was lucky. 
The farmer let me stay on the farm. I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm. So B was not her problem. So I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort of farm to apply to. Finding the right sort of farm to apply to. She did not comment on option C. She did not mention that. Now she's talking about finding the right sort of farm. What does it mean? Making initial contact. So she did not comment on option C. We left it. Wasn't easy. No, they don't seem to have websites, do they? I found mine through a friend of my mother's. I found mine through a friend of my mother's, right? So making initial contact with the farmhouse, he said, it's not easy. They don't have websites. I found one through the friend of my mother. But it wasn't easy. No. It wasn't easy. And she said, no, no means that's right. Okay, so correct answer is option A. Question number 22. Tim Hortons, sorry. Tim was pleased to be able to help. To help what? Now, this time you will only listen to Tim. Only Tim, yeah? When you say Tim, Hortons automatically comes out. So Tim was pleased to be able to help. In one situation, Tim helped somebody, right? Option A, a lamb that had a broken leg. Now, if Tim helped there, it will be the right answer. But if Tim observed and a doctor came and he did everything, it will not be the right answer. Imagine a lamb with a broken leg. <coughs> a sheep that was having difficulty giving birth. Now, there was a sheep giving birth. If Tim helped with that sheep, so definitely it will be the answer. And if Tim only learned and observed, it will not be the answer. Option C, newly born lamb that was having trouble feeding. So if Tim actively helped a newly born lamb that was having trouble feeding, it will be the right answer. Now, out of three options, you have to see where did Tim help actively. Where he observed, he saw, that will not be the answer. Okay, so. My farm was mostly livestock, especially sheep. I really enjoyed helping out with them. I was up most of one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb. On your own? No, the farmer was there, and he told me what to do. It wasn't a straightforward birth, but I managed. It was a great feeling to see the lamb stagger to its feet and start feeding almost straight away, and to know that it was okay. Mm. Then another time, a lamb had broken its leg, and they got the vet in to set it. And he talked me through what he was doing. That was really useful. Huh? C, who said C? Well done. Just you got it. Huh? Who said C? Good. Correct answer is B. Now I tell you why B. Okay? See that? AC ki awaz aari hai na? Shuru mein ka tha ye? End pe AC rai jayega bichara. Alright. Let's see. Question number 22. Yes. My farm was mostly livestock, especially sheep. I really enjoyed helping out with them. I was up most of one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb. I was up most of one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb. On your own? No, the farmer was there. On your own? And he said the farmer was there. Let's go on. And he told me what to do. And he told me what to do. Like it means he did everything. Farmer told me what to do. Okay. It wasn't a straightforward birth, but I managed. Okay, it wasn't a straightforward birth, but I managed. He said I managed. So what does it mean? Sheep that was having difficulty giving birth. Tim was pleased to be able to help. Now, let's see why B and C are wrong. It was a great feeling to see the lamb stagger to its feet and start feeding. It was a great feeling to see the lamb stagger to its feet and start feeding. Did he help with feeding? No, he said it was a great feeling when he saw that. Almost straight away. And to know that it was okay. Hmm. Then another time, a lamb had broken its leg. Then another time, a lamb had broken its leg. And they got the vet in to... And they got the vet... V-E-T, vet. They got the vet in to set it. Now, did he do anything? No. They got the vet in to set it. Set it. And he talked me through what he was doing. 
He that taught was really me useful. through what he was doing. He taught me through. So it's all that. Question number 23, Diana says, sheep on her farm. Now you will listen to Diana carefully and the subject is sheep. You know sheep? We call it Chhatra and Dumba and all that. Yeah, right. So Diana says the sheep on her farm. Option A, various different varieties. Now various different varieties means many varieties. Option B, reared for meat. The only purpose to keep them was for their meat. Reared. Reared means they were raised for their meat. And option C, better quality wool. So if the sheep on her farm, they had better quality wool, option C. If they were raised for meat, option B. And if there were various different types, then it is option A. Now, opposite to these options, will not be the right answer. For example, option A, various different varieties. If Diana says there was only one breed, one breed means A will not be the answer. If she says they were mainly reared for their wool, now what is option B? Meat. And she says for their wool. So will it be the right answer? No. And option C, better quality wool. If she says better quality milk, not wool, even then it will not be the right answer. So you should know why an answer will be the wrong one. Okay, now please listen. Yes, my farm had sheep too. The farm was in a valley and they had a lowland breed called Suffolk. Although the farmer said they'd had other breeds in the past. So were they bred for their meat? Mostly, yes. They're quite big and solid. My farm was up in the hills and they had a different breed of sheep. They were Cheviots. Oh, I heard their wool's really sought after. Yes, it's very hard wearing and they use it for carpets. Right. So, exactly, the wool and all that, that was Tim who was talking about his farm. Correct answer is option B. Please listen. Yes, my farm had sheep too. The farm was in a valley and they had a lowland breed called Suffolk. They had a lowland breed called suffix. Option A, various different varieties. A lowland breed called suffix. So A is not the right answer. Now come to option B. Although the farmer said they'd had other breeds in the past. The farmer said they'd had other breeds in the past. But we are talking about present. So were they bred for their meat? Mostly, yes. Were they bred? Bread is reared. Were they bred for their meat? Mostly, yes. That's the right answer. Okay, now we've got option C. They're quite big and solid. My farm was up in the hills and they had a different breed of sheep. They were Cheviots. Oh, I heard their wools really sought after. I heard their wools really sought after. So where were those sheep? On Tim's farm. But we are not concerned with that. We are only concerned with Diana and her farm. Alright, let's go on. Question number 24. What did students learn about adding supplements to chicken feed? Now, students learn adding supplement chicken feed. You know, we add supplements to chicken feed. Chicken feed is the feed that we give to the chicken. So what did they learn about adding supplements? Now think about supplements. Like the chicken, they give them some supplements so that they grow bigger and they grow earlier like that. These, what do they mean by these? Supplements, because the subject is supplements. Should only be given if specially needed. Underline if specially needed. Underline given if needed. That's it. Given if needed. What should be given if needed? Supplements. And for if needed, they may use the word when the chicken particularly require them. They should only be given when they need them, when they require them. Option B, worth paying extra most effective ones. Like there are some most effective ones, so it's worth paying extra. Worth paying extra means if you pay extra for most effective uh, uh, supplements, it's good. And if they say in the audio, cheap or expensive ones are all the same. 
cheap and expensive ones are all the same then is it worth paying extra for most effective ones no okay option c amount given should be limited amount given limited means at one time chicken should be given limited amount of supplements exactly okay now let's see what do they say what did they learn about chicken uh, and supplements i was interested in the amount of supplements they add to animals feed nowadays like even the chickens got extra vitamins and electrolytes in their feed yes i found that too and they're not cheap but my farmer said some are overpriced for what they are and he didn't give them as a matter of routine just at times when the chickens seem to particularly require them yes my said the same he said certain breeds of chickens might need more supplements than the others but the cheap and expensive ones are all basically the same mm. cheap and expensive ones are all basically the same so option b is wrong and they said that twice so as a matter he doesn't give them as a matter of routine when the chicken particularly required them which option option a is the right answer let's focus again i was interested in the amount of supplements they add to animals feed nowadays like even the chickens got extra vitamins and electrolytes in their feed yes i found that too and they're not cheap but my farmer said some are overpriced for what they are and he didn't give them as a matter of routine he didn't give them as a matter of routine just at times when the chickens seem to particularly require them okay when the chicken particularly seems to require them yes my said the same my said the same that is option a he said certain breeds of chickens might need more supplements than the others okay he said certain breeds of chicken might need more supplement than the others amount given at one time should be limited they didn't talk about that they said certain chicken need more so amount should not be limited but the cheap and expensive ones are all basically the same mm. but cheap and expensive ones are the same so that is uh, the right answer is option a question number 25 what happened when diana was working with dairy cows now imagine diana working with dairy cows okay option a identified cows incorrectly notice one thing i'm not reading all the option identified cows incorrectly like for example one breed another breed so she identified them incorrectly option b accidentally threw milk accidentally threw milk means she was walking and thudda laga and like she threw the milk <laughs> option c made a mistake when storing milk so made a mistake when storing milk she stored the milk and she made a mistake maybe she had to store it in the refrigerator but she stored it somewhere else okay so made a mistake when storing it now what mistake what happened when diana was working with dairy cows let's check so did your farm have any other livestock diana yes dairy cows oh, i made a really embarrassing mistake when i was working in the milk shed Some cows had been treated with antibiotics, so their milk wasn't suitable for human consumption, and it had to be put in a separate container. But I got mixed up, and I poured some milk from the wrong cow in with the milk for humans, so the whole lot had to be thrown away. The farmer wasn't too happy with me. Yeah, she said the farmer wasn't too happy with me. So correct answer is option C. She made a mistake when storing milk. We just focus again. So did your farm have any other livestock, Diana? Yes, dairy cows. Oh, I made a really embarrassing mistake when I was working in the milk shed. Some cows had been treated with antibiotics. Okay, some cows have been treated with antibiotics. So their milk wasn't suitable for human consumption. and it had to be put in a separate container okay that milk had to be put in a separate container but i got mixed up and i poured some milk from the wrong cow in with the milk for humans okay got mixed up so i put some milk from the wrong cow wrong cow means antibiotic and all that in the 
that container. So the whole lot had to be thrown. Whole lot. Whole lot means all the milk had to be thrown. They wasted it. In a way, the farmer wasn't too happy with me. The farmer wasn't too happy with me, right? Would they throw that milk in our country? Well, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's go on. <clears throat> Question number twenty-six. What did both farmers mention about vets and farming? Now, Diana's farmer and Tim's farmer, right? And say so my farmer said the same. So that will be the right answer when they say my farmer said the same. Option A: Vets are failing. Vets. Who are vets? Animal doctors. Vets are failing. <coughs> so if they say vets don't know, they are unsuccessful. They have no idea. So A will be the right answer. Fundamental change in training of vets. So underline fundamental change in training. And we are already talking about vets. Fundamental change in training. Uh, some jobs done by farmer rather by vet. Like there are some jobs even farmer can do. Why do they need to call the doctor? Okay. Now, out of three options, one option will be said by both farmers: farmer of Tim and farmer of Diana. I asked my farmer how much he depended on the vet to deal with health problems. I'd read reports that the livestock's health is being affected as farmers are under pressure to increase production. Well, he didn't agree with that, but he said that actually some of the stuff the vets do, like minor operations, he'd be quite capable of doing himself. Yeah, my farmer said the same, but he reckons vet skills are still needed. Okay, my farmer said he would be able to do that himself. My farmer said the same option. C. D hai nahi hai. Okay, correct answer is C. D hunda na the o sahi ho jana si hai. I asked my farmer how much he depended on the vet to deal with health problems. I'd read reports that the livestock's health is being affected as farmers are under pressure to increase production. Well, he didn't agree with that, but he said that actually some of the stuff the vets do, like minor operations, he'd be quite capable of doing himself. Okay, some of the stuff that uh, vets do, like minor operations, he would be capable to do that. Yeah, my farmer said the same. Yeah, my farmer said the same. Some jobs could be done by farmer rather than by a vet. All right, let's go on. Questions twenty seven to thirty. What opinion do the students give about each of the following modules on their veterinary science course? Now, opinion and modules. You will match them. Module and their opinion. So there are four questions and there are six options. When they give you half a minute to read the questions, what will you read? Options. Now let's see. Option A. Tim found this easier than expected. Underline easier than expected. What is easier than expected? He may say, "I thought it would be difficult, but it was quite straightforward." I thought it would be difficult, but it was quite straightforward. What does it mean? Easier than expected. Option B. Tim thought this was not very clearly organized. Underline. Not very clearly organized. For not very clearly organized, they may use the word "it was all mingled," or things were not organized properly, organization, or anything like that. Diana may do some further study on this. Underline Diana further study on this. Now, if Diana says, "I will do more research into it," if Diana says, "In the next semester, I will study this course." If Diana says I will do my final project presentation on it, so that is further study on this. Option D. Both found reading was difficult. Now again, both found reading difficult. Okay, maybe they gave them some books or anything like that, and one will say reading was very hard, and second one would say yes, for me also it was quite confusing. So it will be the answer. <coughs> Tim was shocked 
at something he learned on this module. So underline Tim shocked learned on this module. Now, if Tim says, I wasn't expecting that, I hadn't thought, right? Or anything like that, which is unusual. When you are shocked, it is something unexpected, unusual. So E will go there. And option F, they were both surprised. Now underline both surprised. How little is known about the aspects of this? Both surprised, little is known. Now little is known means what? People don't know much. People don't know much. Or nobody knows about it. Right? Or people hardly know about it. When they say people hardly know about it, it means how little is known. Now, modules on veterinary science course. The first module is 27, medical terminology. Now, you'll match medical terminology with one of these options. Now, we've got to give a bit of feedback about last term's modules. Just short comments, apparently. Shall we do that now? OK. So, medical terminology. Well, my heart sank when I saw that especially right at the beginning of the course, and I did struggle with it. I thought it'd be hard, but actually I found it all quite straightforward. I thought it would be hard, but I found it quite straightforward. Option A. Well done. Next is diet and nutrition. What did you think about diet and nutrition? OK, I suppose. Do you remember what they told us about pet food and the fact that there's such limited checking into whether or not it's contaminated? I mean, in comparison with the checks on food for humans, I thought that was terrible. Mm. I thought that was terrible. No checks for contamination on animal food. So I thought that was terrible. What does it mean? Tim was shocked at something he learned. What did he learn? that there were no checks on pets' food for contamination. So I thought it was terrible. That is, Tim was shocked. Now, for shocked, he said, I thought it was terrible. Means he was shocked. So E will be the right answer. And one option will be used once only. Over here, if the options are three and questions are six, then you can use options more than once. And they mention it also. You may use one option, but if options are more and questions are less, then they use one option. Uh, uh, then the option is not repeated. Next is animal disease. I think the module that really impressed me was the animal disease one, when we looked at domesticated animals in different parts of the world, like camels and water buffalo and alpaca. The economies of so many countries depend on these, but scientists don't know much about the diseases that affect them. Yes. I thought they'd know a lot about ways of controlling and eradicating those diseases, but that's not the case at all. Scientists don't know much. I thought they would know a lot, but that is not the case at all. What does it mean? Exactly. That is, they were both surprised how little is known about some aspects of this. Question number 30, wildlife medication. I loved the wildlife medication unit. Things like helping birds that have been caught in oil spills. That's something I hadn't thought about before. Yeah. I thought I might write my dissertation on something connected with that. Right. So, actually, I was thinking I something... I thought I way. might write my dissertation on something connected with that. That is option C, further study. What is further study? Dissertation. And dissertation is more like a final project. When you complete your degree... You deliver a final project that is called dissertation. So C will be the right answer for that. All right. Now we've got IELTS listening part four. Questions 31 to 40. Complete the notes below. Write one word only. So notes completion with one word only. No number. Nothing else and all that. Huh? Class me coffee pee kya hai Labyrinths. Labyrinth is the topic. What is labyrinth? Labyrinth is IELTS. Right? Labyrinth is what we call puzzle or we call it maze. Maze or puzzle or in Urdu we call it bhul bhulaiya. Okay? Like you know, you go sometimes there are labyrinths made out of maze, 
you have to go and cross and reach the ending point and all that so the topic is labyrinth uh, you may have seen sometimes in the newspaper you start from here and you have to come out and there are dead ends you go then there's dead end then you come back then you go and you have to reach there that is what we call labyrinth okay so definition a winding spiral path leading to a central area sometimes you have to reach the central area you may have seen a little game children play with a little ball in it and they do it like this and they have to come to the middle that is also called a labyrinth a labyrinth compared with maze mazes are a type of i told you this word already huh in part one so these things will repeat type of what are the synonyms kind of sort of if we talk about animals or plants if the topic is that then species of so answer will come after the synonym of type of mazes are a type of mazes are a kind of sort of and all that part 4 you will hear an anthropology student giving a presentation on spiral path designs known as labyrinths labyrinths have existed for well over 4000 years labyrinths and labyrinthine symbols have been found in regions as diverse as modern day turkey, ireland, greece and india. there are various designs of labyrinth, but what they all have in common is a winding spiral path which leads to a central area. there is one starting point at the entrance and the goal is to reach the central area. finding your way through a labyrinth involves many twists and turns, but it's not possible to get lost. as there is only one single path in modern times the word labyrinth has taken on a different meaning and is often used as a synonym for a maze a maze is quite different as it is a kind of puzzle with an intricate network of paths okay a maze is quite different it is a kind of puzzle p u double z l e got it now you don't need to listen to everything you're just waiting for the synonym of type of and you found the answer all good okay part 4 is not as confusing as part 3 now some are trying to smile <laughs> okay part 3 uh, actually snatched your smile question 2 the 32 dash is needed to navigate through a maze in order to navigate through a maze you need something maybe if the answer is intelligence is needed to navigate through a maze all right so for that i mean now this is advanced level english as they are delivering a lecture for instance answer is intelligence is needed to navigate through a maze you say you cannot navigate through a maze until you use your intelligence what does it mean intelligence is needed so they say before using intelligence unless you use intelligence or before using intelligence right so you cannot solve a maze before using intelligence without using intelligence and all that now let's see mazes became fashionable in the 15th and 16th centuries in europe and can still be found in the gardens of great houses and palaces The paths are usually surrounded by thick high hedges so that it's not possible to see over them. Entering a maze usually involves getting lost a few times before using logic to work out the pattern and find your way to the center and then out again. All right, before using logic. Exactly. So correct answer is logic. Question number 33, the word maze is derived from a word meaning a feeling of now this word feeling of i have seen this word in ielts on four five occasions listening as well as reading underline the word feeling of <clears throat> for feeling of they use the word feeling of sense of emotion of state of for example answer is happiness feeling of happiness sense of happiness emotion of happiness state of happiness okay so whatever comes after the synonym of feeling of it will be the answer there are lots of dead ends and paths which lead you back to where you started the word maze is believed to come from a scandinavian word 
for a state of confusion. This is where the word amazing comes from. Okay, for a state of confusion. State of is the synonym of feeling of. Okay. Next, labyrinths represent a journey through life. They have, what do they mean by they? Labyrinths. Labyrinths have frequently been used in dash and prayer. Now, answer will come with prayer. In two things, labyrinths were used. One is prayer. And second, they will tell us where they used it. Labyrinths, on the other hand, have a very different function. Although people now often refer to things they find complicated as labyrinths, this is not how they were seen in the past. The winding spiral of the labyrinth has been used for centuries as a metaphor for life's journey. It served as a spiritual reminder that there is purpose and meaning to our lives and helped to give people a sense of direction. Labyrinths are thought to encourage a feeling of calm and have been used as a meditation and prayer tool in many cultures over many centuries. Okay, used as meditation and prayer tool. So answer is meditation. Okay, don't write medication. Meditation. Huh? All clear? Meditation. Medi. M-E-D-I. T-A-T-I-O-N. Meditation. Meditation is this. Yeah? Yeah, when you're thinking what to do next and all that. Next, early examples of labyrinth spiral. Ancient carvings. Now, carvings you may have seen. Carving is like, you know, when you carve something. Ancient carvings on dash. Dash means surface. For example, ancient carvings on mountains. Ancient carvings on rocks. Ancient carvings on walls. So carving is when you carve something, in, you make a design on the wall, right? So that is what we call a carving. So ancient carvings on dash means answer is going to be a surface or a material on which, for example, ancient carvings on wood, ancient carvings on stone or anything like that. The earliest examples of the labyrinth spiral pattern have been found carved into stone from Sardinia to Scandinavia, from Arizona to India to Africa. So carved into stone. So are, uh, ancient carvings on stone and carved into <coughs> stone. Next is Pima. Uh, and there is no question. So just underline Pima and baskets. And you don't need to read this option. After that, ancient Greeks. Now, in the audio, when they say ancient Greeks, you will have to be alert that now my answer is going to come. Ancient Greeks used the symbol on dash. They used the symbol of uh, labyrinth on something. On what? That's what we need to check. In Europe, these spiral carvings date from the late Bronze Age. The Native American Pima tribe wove baskets with a circular labyrinth design that depicted their own cosmology. In ancient Greece, the labyrinth spiral was used on coins around 4,000 years ago. All right. Labyrinths... Used on coins. C-O-I-N-S. Coins. All right. Question number 37. Walking labyrinths. Largest surviving example of turf labyrinth once had a big dash in its center. Two words will give you the answer. Big and center. Underline that. For big, they may use the word large, enormous, gigantic, huge, or anything like that. For center, they commonly use the word center or middle. Right? Now, whatever is in the middle of the labyrinth, huge dash in the middle of the labyrinth, you can easily find the answer. In Northern Europe, there were actual physical labyrinths designed for walking on. These were cut into the turf or grass, usually in a circular pattern. The origin of these walking labyrinths remains unclear, but they were probably used for fertility rites, which may date back thousands of years. Eleven examples of turf labyrinths survive today, including the largest one at Saffron Walden, England, which used to have a large tree in the middle of it. 
which used to have a large tree in the middle of it. It means that labyrinth. And answer is tree. Good. All right. Next, labyrinths nowadays present believed to have a beneficial impact on mental and physical health, e.g., walking a maze can reduce a person's dash rate. Now, underline the word can reduce. For can reduce, they use different words, but they also use the word slower. Slower a person's dash rate. For example, answer is heart rate. So for that, they can use the word slower heart rate. Okay, let's see. More recently, labyrinths have experienced something of a revival. Some believe that walking a labyrinth promotes healing and mindfulness. And there are those who believe in its emotional and physical benefits, which include slower breathing and a restored sense of balance and perspective. Okay, which includes slower breathing and sense of balance. So answer is, how do you spell it? T-H-I-N-G, breathing. Okay, yeah, that's right, slower breathing. Next, they will talk about prisons. Underline the word prison. There is no question there. Popular with patients, visitors, and staff in hospitals. Patients who cannot walk can use finger labyrinth made from. Again, the word made from. Right? Made from wood, wooden dash. So made from dash. Again, the same technique. Now you can see they use this technique in part one. And this time they're using it in part four. For example, answer is made from plastic. So they will say plastic labyrinth. Okay, yeah. This idea has become so popular that labyrinths have been laid into the floors of spas, wellness centers, and even prisons in recent years. A pamphlet at Colorado Children's Hospital informs patients that walking a labyrinth can often calm people in the midst of a crisis. And apparently, it's not only patients who benefit. Many visitors find walking a labyrinth less stressful than sitting in a corridor or waiting room. Some doctors even walk the labyrinth during their breaks. In some hospitals, patients who can't walk can have a paper finger labyrinth brought to their bed. Okay, the patients who cannot walk can have a paper finger labyrinth. So what is the answer? Finger labyrinth made from paper. Right, that's good. Question number 40. Research has shown that Alzheimer's sufferers experience less dash. Now, less is the main word. Answer will come after the synonym of less. For example, answer is tension. Less tension. Relief from tension. Lower level of tension. Reduced tension. Anything like that, okay? For example... One study found that walking a labyrinth provided short-term calming, relaxation and relief from anxiety for Alzheimer's patients. All right, short-term calming and relief from anxiety for Alzheimer's patients. Anxiety, how do you spell? X-I-E-T-Y. Good, fine? Yes, that's great.